up everybody welcome back to the channel a little more blood and plunder action for you today we're taking a look at a quick one a unboxing here for the canoe ship here for the natives in blood and plunder so this will be a real quick one there's not much to this one unlike some of the bigger ships that we've been looking at here more recently so we'll get this open for you guys we'll show you what you can expect inside and take a quick look so we'll be right back Alrighty guys, we got everything open and here's what you get. So it's pretty simple. We have the canoe itself, so it does fit a decent size unit. And again, you can see some of the detail there. Hopefully that kind of shows up on the cam. But basically, that is it. There's no assembly, a little bit of cleanup work. And then you get your unit card as well. So we'll take a look at that real quick. Oops. So pretty cheap to feel these. Definitely gonna run some of these in quantity. Yeah, top speed of four, four inch turn, size one ship. Obviously can't take much damage, but it is kind of hard to hit. Does have a couple of neat profiles there too, and um, obviously there's not really a sail setting. So what has it got? It's got sweeps four, so you can move up to four inches under oars while you're at uh, while the sails are at speed zero. Low profile, so this does give you somewhat of survivability, but not necessarily all that much either. Plus four penalty to a shoot test made with artillery when you attempt to hit the hull of this non-rigging uh, structure section. This penalty uh, is not applied to the additional dice, just the initial hit. But again, if the cannon does manage to, to make a connection here, you're not going to last too long. Paddles. The unit does not need to be assigned to the sweeps in order to move this boat with oars. It may always move at its sweeps value minus one, as long as there is enough models on the boat to satisfy the requirements. If a unit is assigned to the sweeps, the boat may move its full sweep value, though. Now, it does have the unstable rule as well. So when this boat is hit by a cannon and after casualties are removed, roll a d10 for each surviving model inside of it on a one or two. They're also removed as a casualty, so again... Not much there to protect you from artillery fire. And then last but not least here, also the ship's boat trait, which is pretty cool. So if you have a large unit, you can break it up into multiple canoes. Basically, you do have to have at least um, uh, each boat filled to at least half capacity to be able to field that and then stay in coherency for the units. But it's a nice way of solving um, that issue of, you know, if you have literally too many models because the unit's too large on how to fit that in there. So being able to split that across a couple of boats does mean you got to buy more boats, um, more of these canoes. We'll talk about that in a second. So that is something. Now, this, similar to rowboats and stuff like that, um, these things, I think, clock in at like 25 bucks. Really, this, like some of the other smaller ships we've seen, like the Piraguas recently, um, they just feel a bit overpriced, really, for what you're getting. So 25 bucks for this. You can imagine maybe a full-on collection of the, a given faction like this probably want at least two maybe four maybe even more so you know when you're getting up to like a hundred bucks or so for just getting some canoes it, it it is just a little bit salty so really um i feel like these ought to be uh probably around like 20 bucks even and even that's probably a little bit high for what this really is but that's certainly better than 25 that does seem like a lot but let us know your thoughts on that uh, that's really the only downside of this um and uh, the other smaller ships is um just some of the the pricing on them but other than that it's a fun fun little vessel that we'll have in our force but again let us know your comments where you think uh these are price wise um some of the other pricing options there for uh similar ships now obviously you can like 3d print some of this stuff now so if you are lucky enough to do that uh, obviously price becomes less of an issue so let us know your thoughts in the comments on the ship, how many you have, if you enjoy using these in your different factions. So drop us some comments there, like, subscribe. We'll have more Blood and Plunder for you guys very, very soon. Thanks so much as always for watching. We'll see you in the next one.